There's no such thing as a safe drug. By the time a drug's approved and it hits the general population, we don't know even 50% of the side effects that are involved with that drug. We were being trained to misinform people. I spent 15 years in the pharmaceutical industry working for some of the major manufacturers. It wasn't like I woke up one morning and said, you know, I need to get out of pharmaceutical sales. It was actually um, an awakening process for me. It was a spiritual and consciousness process where as I started observing what was happening, what some of the drugs were doing, the misinformation, the disinformation, that I was being encouraged to minimize side effects when I talked to doctors, I started to recognize that these patients were literally being tortured by the drugs that they were given. My niece was 20 years old. She was attending Indiana University and she was a pre-med student. Extremely intelligent, beautiful woman and just a beautiful spirit inside and out. She was in a car accident and was prescribed Vicodin, hydrocodone, for pain and became addicted. While she was studying, she determined that the sedative properties of her drugs were keeping her from being able to concentrate, so she purchased some ephedra, which is a stimulant. She had a drug interaction and ended up in the emergency room at the local hospital. And they tagged her with a bipolar illness diagnosis, not a drug toxicity or, um, you know, reaction to the drugs that she was on. And they started giving her more major antipsychotics and mood stabilizers. And that set her on the road to becoming a mental patient. She eventually had to drop out of school after a five month period of trying to withdraw from Effexor and all of the other antipsychotics and drugs that they had put her on. She was extremely severely depressed and her mom was on her way home to take her forcibly back to the psychiatrist and get her placed back on drugs. So my niece walked into her younger sister's room and took an angel-shaped lantern that was filled with oil and poured it over herself and ignited it and she burned herself alive. It was a promise that I made to her that I would not let her memory be sullied, that I would tell people what in fact had happened to her and that she would not be remembered as a mentally or genetically defective person, that I would not allow that to happen. And I realized that there are thousands and thousands of those people out there and they need a voice and I'm serving as that voice. Now, how's this for a very scary number? In the last 10 years, the use of antipsychotic drugs on young children and teenagers has increased more than 500%. There's growing concern these drugs are being given in even greater doses to kids in foster care, putting them in a virtual chemical straitjacket. Here's national correspondent Byron Pitts with tonight's Eye on Your Children. Yes, this child is on six different psychotropic drugs, seven different psychotropic drugs. Gwen Olson is a child advocate and a former pharmaceutical rep who quit her job and wrote this book, Confessions of an RX Drug Pusher, after seeing so many children given so many drugs. They clamp down on the central nervous system. In effect, they reduce your mobility and, and that sort of thing. So they're sort of like um, a chemical straitjacket. A large number of psychiatrists are dishonest because I see them giving people drugs that they know are brain damaging therapeutics, that they know do not have positive long term outcomes, that they know will not cure anything. They just take a list of symptoms and then they call it a mental illness or a mental disorder. And these are voted upon by psychiatrists. We can define people as being mentally ill, and therefore we can sell more drugs for the pharmaceutical industry. It's an extremely lucrative alliance because there's no scientific data that's required for a psychiatrist to diagnose a mental illness. There's no blood test, there's no urine test, there's no PET scan, there's no medical evidence required. And so therefore, that broadens the potential patient population considerably. I was so disillusioned as well as angry when I really found out how much deception, how much misinformation was taking place and how I had been used in that game because I literally was the one who was on the front lines. I was harming people unintentionally, but I was responsible and I carry a burden for that now. I decided that in order for me to be able to live with myself based on what I had observed and participated in, 
that I had a moral obligation to get out and inform other people. When I have talked to as many people that I have talked to in the last year, when I have seen as many psychiatric patients damaged, I know that what I'm doing is a calling, it's a spiritual calling for me. And I do it with great conviction and I do it with passion because I understand that this is a situation that's not going to get any better unless people that have this experience and knowledge start speaking out.